Today, we go to Mechanicone. Before I go any further, let's just clarify what I mean by honeycomb. I am of course talking about the confectionery, the man-made sugary stuff that tastes great and is bad for your teeth. Um, a couple of old popular examples are oh, the Crumble, my personal favourite. Crunchy, yeah it's alright. Uh, both of these are honeycomb, both of them are coated in chocolate, I'll explain why later. You can buy them in bars like this, you can buy them in pieces like that. Um, and that's a popular sweet, but it's really, really easy to make yourself and all you need are three ingredients. Let's have a look at those. First of all, you need some sugar. Just regular caster sugar uh, is, that you can uh, pick up from the supermarket. You probably already have in the kitchen. You need that. Second ingredient you need is golden syrup. Now golden syrup is also a type of sugar. It has a higher water content uh, and we must use the two different types of sugar. The third ingredient is bicarb soda or baking soda. And that's what gives us the bubbles. That's really important. All right, let's go and do it. Now that we have our ingredients, the next step is to find ourselves a small to medium sized saucepan. Perfect. First up, we'll measure out our two different types of sugar. I'm starting with the golden syrup and I'm measuring three tablespoons worth or 60 milliliters, which I'm going to put into the pan. Now you can use glucose syrup or even honey in place of golden syrup. I'm using golden syrup today because I find that works really well. Okay, so three tablespoons worth in the pan. It's now time to add the caster sugar and I'm weighing out 100 grams. You can use regular coarse white sugar in place of caster sugar if you don't have it. It'll just take a little longer for the grains to dissolve. So white sugar's in there with the golden syrup. It's now time to put on the heat. And note I'm using a really low heat. It's really important that you heat your mixture as slowly as possible. So we have our golden syrup, our caster sugar on a low heat, and I'm gonna start stirring this. And I'm using a wooden spoon. If you use a metal spoon, you'll find you'll get crystals in your mixture and we want to avoid that. We want a, a nice fine grain in our honeycomb, nothing too coarse. Now you want to continue to stir until you can no longer feel the grittiness of the sugar and you know that it's completely dissolved. Once that's happened, you can stop stirring and at some point you'll want to take the temperature. Now I'm using a candy thermometer here and it's measuring the temperature of my beautiful bubbly toffee mixture and it's currently... 115 degrees. Now I need to get it up to 150 so this still has a little while to go. Now if you don't have a candy thermometer there's another method you can use to tell when you when you have reached 150 degrees and that is to get a glass of water, get a small spoonful of your toffee mixture on your wooden spoon and you pop a few drops into your glass of water and listen carefully because if it's 150 degrees it will crack it, it solidifies rapidly gets hard and you'll actually hear an audible crack. If it doesn't give you that crack, then you haven't reached the top temperature yet. Once your mix has reached 150 degrees Celsius, take it off the heat and get a teaspoon of bicarb soda and pop that in. Now let's pause for a moment and take a quick look at the science. When bicarb soda is heated up, a chemical reaction takes place. It changes from being sodium bicarbonate to sodium carbonate, it's the sodium here that imparts that salty flavour that goes so well with the sugar, plus water, replacing a small amount of the water that we've boiled off, plus carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide, as you may know, is a gas, and it's this gas that's going to change what would otherwise be toffee into honeycomb. It's time now to start stirring again, and straight away you can see the chemical reaction has kicked off and our toffee mixture is turning into molten honeycomb. Now stir thoroughly for maybe 20 seconds or so, just so you get all those CO2 bubbles all the way through the mixture and that you're breaking up any clumps of sodium carbonate because that tastes like a mouthful of salt and is not very pleasant. Once you've done that, tip out onto a tray and allow that to cool. You can let it cool at room temperature, but if you're impatient like me, you can put it in the fridge or even the freezer. If you do this, it should take no more than 20 minutes before it becomes hard and brittle. Once it is hard and brittle, it will break quite easily and you can tuck right in. If you don't eat it all in one sitting, which would not be a good idea, you'll need to store it in an airtight container. See, honeycomb has a strong affinity for water and if left out too long, it will absorb moisture from the air, making it very sticky. 
The batch on the left here was left out uncovered for about 10 hours and you can see it has become quite a bit darker in colour and has a noticeable sheen to it due to the water it's absorbed. It's also become terribly sticky. The sticky problem is in fact the reason the honeycomb is almost always sold coated in chocolate. The chocolate forms an airtight layer that keeps the moisture out and the honeycomb nice and crunchy. Now that lollies are sold in airtight wrappers this wouldn't be a problem, but a hundred years ago lollies weren't. So confectioners like the Hoadley family who created the Violet Crumble in the early 20th century had to come up with a way to keep the moisture out and the chocolate method proved to be a hit.